Lord Jesus, thank you that you said yes to us in all of our uh, suffering, in all of our sinfulness, in all of our createdness in you. You said yes. And we come this morning, Lord, to celebrate that you came to Jerusalem and chose to walk the way of the cross that we might come to new creation, that we might have our sins dealt with and uh, in your raising to new life that we might find our new creation. Thank you for the choices that you made to love us and to die for us, that we might find your way. Bless us, we pray in your word. Amen. There is a challenge here this morning in the light of this Palm Sunday journey of Jesus. And I want to get to that challenge through an Old Testament figure called Gideon. Gideon, you may remember, when he is called by God, responds like this. But how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh. And I'm the least in my family. How can I save Israel? Gideon is called to this saving work in the midst of attacks on Israel by the Midianites who just take what they want. And the people of Israel are hiding in cliffs and rocks and Gideon, when God is speaking to him, he is trying to sift grain while he's hiding. It's like in a barrel. And he's trying to get the grain sifted out, needs the wind, but he's just surrounded by the rocks and there's no wind to make this happen. He's in hiding. It's an impossible thing. And I see in Gideon's response to this approach of God, I see ways of understanding the events of Palm Sunday that bring the challenge to us that I see in this. And there are three parts to this challenge. First, Gideon doesn't trust the way that God describes him. God calls him mighty warrior. These are the first words of approach to Gideon, mighty warrior. And there is much to support Gideon's response of laughter and rejection. How can this describe him when he is hiding away in the caves and rocks, fearful to even gather grain and make bread? Gideon at the start does not take up this description that God gives to him. And the events of Palm Sunday are all about Jesus embracing and declaring who he is in the Father's eyes. The Son, the beloved Son, um, King in David's line, Saviour, Messiah, the one who comes in the name of the Lord. In the choices made, the journey into Jerusalem, the hosannas and the songs, the riding of the donkey, the words spoken, Jesus is saying, this is who I am, the Son of the Father, Messiah, King. Despite everything that speaks against that, this is who I am. Despite all that the people will speak against this and the violence that will take hold of him against the lowliness of his present life, Jesus, in the events of Palm Sunday, he is de declaring that God's words are true. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And the first part of the challenge to us is here, I think. Do we follow Gideon or Jesus? Do we reject or embrace God's description of us? And there are so many parts of God's world, word, word I could go to on this. But let's pull one out for, from John's first letter in chapter 1 verse 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And just as Gideon could look around him, 
and see plenty of reason to laugh at the thought of himself as this mighty warrior. We also may have plenty around us saying you are not a child of God. With Jesus too, there was so much to tell him that he was not the beloved son of the father of the line of David, King Messiah. Gideon sought to avoid the description that God gave of him. But Jesus takes it up on Palm Sunday and declares it out. Even if there is no one else who will say this, Jesus says, I declare this. This is who I am. Against all in your life that says no, this morning I want you to declare I am a child of God. This is who I am. The second part of the challenge lies in this. Gideon does all he can to not take forward his calling from God. We'll come to the testing in a moment, but even before he gets to the testing of God, Gideon is avoiding taking up the call of God in his life. He lays down questions like, how can this be? He delays through what look like acts of devotion, where he waits to set up a sacrifice to see if it really is God who is calling him to do this. He's doing part of what God is saying, but with no boldness. Gideon is avoiding the call that God is placing on him. And here on Palm Sunday, we see Jesus reaching his calling, taking hold of it. This is such a provocative statement of intent that Jesus makes here. Those in authority could not fail to know what Jesus was claiming of himself and the path that he was taking. And here I want to be a bit more focused. We all have a calling to follow Jesus, to live in the Beatitudes. But just as Gideon was being called to a specific work and as Jesus was taking forward what only Jesus could do, this part of the challenge of Palm Sunday for me is to do with specific calls. What are the things that God has, has been calling you to do for some time? What are those wee nudgings of the Spirit that are getting a hold of you and you're putting to one side, not taking up? This for me is the immediate challenge of this contrast between Gideon and Jesus. Gideon keeps finding ways to not take up the call of God. Where we see in Palm Sunday, Jesus is grabbing hold of it with both hands and making life-changing decisions. And that to me is the challenge of this second part that I see. Take hold of your calling. These nudgings, these, these uh, murmurings of God in your life. Take hold of these and let God take you where he will. The third part of the challenge is really a, a, a detail within that taking hold of your calling. Gideon tests God. Not once, but twice. And each time these are delaying tactics. He doesn't want to take up the calling of God to be this mighty warrior. He wants to stay in the rocks, sifting wheat in a barrel. And the testing of God comes when Gideon is avoiding the call. If you remember, he puts this sheep's wool on the floor and he asks God, Lord, cover it in dew, but not the floor around it. And then I'll know it's you. So God does that the first night. And then Gideon says, well, I'm still not entirely sure. God, I'll lay it out again. And this time, cover the floor in dew, but leave the, the rug dry. And so the Lord does, does that. And uh, the next morning, Gideon sees that the wool is dry. And there's all these delays. But there comes a time to act to take up your calling, to live to the name that God gives you. And with the events of Palm Sunday, Jesus demonstrates what it looks like to take up your calling. Actively, purpose, purposely, with intent. 
But as I've reflected on that, I see the cost of it. And this is why I think Gideon keeps avoiding his calling, testing God, side-tracking so much, because there is a cost to bear in taking up God's calling, and Gideon is struggling to bear it. There is a way to view the events of Palm Sunday and the week that leads up to the cross, where we simply see the path set out, and Jesus takes this journey, and he just follows what is being asked of him. But there are so many signals through the gospel narratives of these days, from Jesus weeping over Jerusalem on Palm Sunday through to the tears of blood at Gethsemane. There are so many signals that these steps that Jesus takes, that each step was a choice that Jesus took with all the emotions of that and the pain of it. And it was painful and difficult and yet he took those steps and those choices to follow his calling. In testing God, Gideon was avoiding making these steps, these choices he was putting off. And the challenge I hear now this morning, on this Palm Sunday, is the challenge to stop putting off. For each of us to take up our callings of the Lord, stop the testing, stop the avoiding, know who you are and what God has called you to do and take up the emotional cost of doing it, but take the next step. It is the emotional intensity. It is the emotional intensity of what Jesus is doing here that that catches me and challenges me. Jesus, as this most human of human beings, all that we were created to be, these choices he makes are taken in the full depth of the emotional cost to him. These are not cold, distant choices that he takes on Palm Sunday, but they are deliberate steps taken as the beloved son of the Father, taking up his calling for this moment, knowing the cost and yet still taking deliberate steps. There are the words of the song that I come to that come to mind for me um, at this point. Song will know this man of sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came, ruined sinners to re- reclaim. Hallelujah, what a Saviour! And this is what Jesus did for us. And I want to let that sit there the, the whole emotional content of that uh, in the decisions that Jesus took, and let that become the heart of our own callings to be a child of God, saved in this grace where Jesus kept taking the next step, despite the cost. So whatever God is calling you to, all these wee nudgings you've been putting to the sides, these wee murmurings of God that you're just setting to one side, not taking up, this is the time to take it up. That's the challenge I hear in Palm Sunday. Take up your calling to God. Let me pray. Lord, thank you that your spirit is living and active, walking amongst us. Thank you that you place a calling upon each of our lives, that you desire the best for us, Lord. Forgive us when we set aside these these callings, these murmurings, these nudgings of the Spirit. Help us to bring our focus back to you, to hear your call and to answer your call, Lord. Help us take up what you're calling us to do and follow whatever the cost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.